Hello everyone and welcome to my BR Paladin with a self-cast Holy Shock using Griswold and on Switch I'm also of course using Beast Moon Road. So I'm gonna demo the build here at the start just showing you some yeah, mechanics and also the gear here. It's going to be on player's aid. So the Cold Gloves, Raven Frost, Vadungus, Elite Ring, Gore Riders upgraded and then Griswold the 4 part set with a Lightning Fascinator 5-5. Five, five. And then a Griswold. You could also go with like a plus offensive aura skiller with life. That would also be a good amulet choice. And then I just went with some offensive skillers and yeah. Stats on the small charms are uh, attack rating because I need it for yeah. Just feeling a little more safe with connected hits. So in Wear Bear I went with 4000 life and the mercenary is just standard infinity. You can see the attack speed is very fast as well using Griswold. It's quite awesome to look at. But for now we will just kinda yeah, show the mechanics. Look at the lightning damage and look at the like how I survive and everything. That's kind of the main gist here at the start. So you can see that I'm somewhat two shotting players, eight mobs that doesn't have you know that much health and whatever. Now I'm going to show off the lightning damage. Notice the Horatrum engine, the health bar at the top. So on players 8, mobs that have like medium lightning resistance, well, probably even if they don't have the, that much of a lightning resistance, they are just not really gonna die. Players 8 is a bit of a stretch for this build here. The survival is fine enough. If you're going to live for the most part, as long as you can keep your health up with your cools, a life tap prox, it's really really fine enough survival. You can see the mercenaries also struggling for a second there. Layers 8 is a lot of damage for this build. But yeah, the lightning damage is not sufficient enough on players 8. You can see however that soul killers will eventually get killed, so really low health mobs. Uh, yeah, they will get killed, but it's going to take a bit of a, a while before it does happen. Uh, but overall, you're gonna have to rely on physical damage on players 8. Now you can also see that I'm low health, so this is where we need to hope a fish for a Dracul proc, which just does not happen. And this is also a problem, uh, having to rely again on Dracul's. It's not really optimal kind of having that uh, going on on players 8 but you can see uh, if the cools procs I would have lived there no problem but that's kind of the crux of the build and how I wanted to show it off here at the start of the video so for now we will just move on and so let's tone it down a little bit to players 5 starting with holy shield up and then wear bear that's just how I buffed myself up you can now see that the damage taken and also the lightning damage is a lot better Players 8 is just a tough call for this build. Just in a bit I'm gonna go up and show the lightning damage again. A lot of elemental damage in this particular area here, but it's not really an issue. I'm gonna stay up, at least if I can get a Dracul proc now and then. The life leech is not good. I'm not doing that much physical damage to make leech work like if you were using like a standard seal lot with a grief or whatever. But yeah, notice the uh, damage now. Did you also notice that now the infinity, the merc is dead, the lightning damage is a lot less. So this build heavily relies on infinity merc and that's kind of the sad part. This build is much like a Javison or Lightning Sorceress, when my Infinity Merc dies, my Lightning Damage also goes down by a lot, uh, which you saw there on the Horatio Ranching, like the damage it was losing prior to the Merc uh, not uh, having died, and then after it died, it was kind of night and day, before it was just gonna, well, after the death, it was just healing itself up, even with uh, the damage still taking from the aura. But yeah, there's not much to do about it, the Merc is going to be a very important part of this build, which I'll also talk about more later on. And so, the start of the video done, I now want to do a live 3 minute clear Chaos 1 on Players 1. Now, as I talked about before at the start of the video, the Lightning Aura, depending on you know lightning resistance of the mobs and like maybe even how close they are, moving out of the frame or anything like that, 
it does depend it does vary a lot how much like the lightning damage actually matters but it is pretty nice on lower mobs that doesn't have that much lightning resistance up here in carriage uh, well in act 4 in general the doom knights or whatever have a lot of lightning resistance and this is also again where infinity comes in it really just is that important a rune word to make this build work I wish again it isn't another lightning based build that needs infinity but it yeah it really does need it but uh, yeah three minutes clear that's the aim I don't want to think that it should be much more than that but we will see and so let's begin usually these sort of meter builds like a lightning sorceress or hammer paladin or anything like that tends to also clear Keros runs in about maybe two and a half minutes, three minutes on players one. On eight players it might be as much as like seven minutes but it can also be as low as five minutes. And when I say clear it's just like really clearing every mob, uh, trying to not like skip anything. Because like if you're doing a normal run you would also be clearing most of the mobs you know um, so trying to make it a realistic one when I do these sort of clears here on my uh, videos. But yeah, you can see so far it's kind of clean one shot for the most part when I just yeah, connect with hits. I still think that my attack rating is a little bit low. Um, with infinity, uh, also get the conviction or obviously, which does lower the defense of the mobs as well as their resistance. So that should uh, help just a little bit on uh, connecting hits oh well it shouldn't just help a little bit it should help a lot so in theory i shouldn't really have much of an issue uh, hitting mobs uh, another thing that's also worth mentioning is that now that we don't have teleport because well we're stuck in this wear bear form you can see now the merc is stuck down here it would be nice if he would just come up and follow and start attacking with teleport you just get so much more control uh, of the conviction aura uh, which is really really important actually to just kind of keep the lightning damage going and break resistance and in my case also get uh, connecting more hits because of my low attack rating so yeah the mercenaries ai is just bad it's always going to be and we'll just have to live with that when we don't have a teleport uh, in terms of other things the survival is not as good as I had hoped, but it's still good enough to kind of just uh, play like stress-free for the most part. But if you do get into heated situations where you have to fish for a uh, Dracul to proc life tap, and you you know you don't get that life tap at that important moment, it is kind of a bad uh, experience, as I also showed in the intro of the uh, video. But for now, we will uh, yeah. Just try to clear everything but you can see now it's already two and a half minutes uh it's this build sort of reminds me about the vengeance paladin another build that i also did recently so the vengeance paladin is also a really strong build it can also utilize griswold but the sad part about uh these sort of builds is that they are like this one punch man type of build um really good single target maybe even good survival like it has a lot of uh, pluses but in a game where you just need AoE to be good yeah if you don't have AoE it's just kind of a bad time and so far the clear speed is definitely a bit uh, yeah lagging but we will try to get up to the next couple of seals and see how we can finish this oh now my wear bear also dropped so yeah I have to go in and sometimes just kind of do that mid run and be a bit dicey if it <laughs> maybe Corrupt at the wrong time. So, a lot of saves packs. It's always a bit annoying on melee packs. It does hurt a lot. And it also does in this build. You li like, you just can't tank this one as melee. The Merc is going to die, you're going to die. That's kind of just like the gist of this. Like, you can rush in and hope to get a life tech proc. And yeah, then you're maybe gonna be just fine. But for the most part, this pack is always going to be annoying for these uh, physical builds. Unless you're like a really tanky, I don't know, uh, standard seal paladin, uh, then maybe it could be okay. You know, actually having good life leech. This build does not have good life leech like at all, but if you use gr grief and whatnot, you should be able to always kind of just go in there and be okay. 
So the last seal, let's see about it. Also had to, yeah, get the mercenary again, but uh, yeah, it will spawn now. Oh, Nemhug is going to tank it. Let's go and help him. <laughs> see if we can both stay up. So I got mana burned there a little bit, but it was no issue. So that's a nice thing, extra lots of mana burn. Yeah, it obviously doesn't matter when we're just utilizing attack, uh, auto attack, but yeah. Let's see some boss damage. I do have a lot of crushing blows, so it should go down very fast. And done. Pretty sweet. But uh, yeah. Maybe not the fastest clear speed, but uh, maybe I can rerun this again and see if I can get a little better clear time. So yeah, gonna rerun this one just to see if I can get a little better time. Hopefully I just played poorly while I was talking before. Okay, I spawned a pretty empty map so far. Funny. But yeah, that's the nature of the business. Lightning and fire immune here. But yeah, my physical damage is enough to kill it fast. At least on players 1, physical immunes or lightning immunes even are no problem really. But it might be if I was playing like players at least 4 I think would start to be a problem. Strong damage does really, really connect. So, Logisace back and the Merc just instantly dies. I even tried to step back a little bit. It's funny, even with this, this much survival on you know, a max block, I have pretty decent faster hit recovery, all that sort of stuff. I still have to be careful. One thing I also do want to note is that the attack frame apparently is very slow for block or the block frame or whatever it's called animation is pretty slow in the werebear form. At least I heard that was the case, but it doesn't seem to really be an issue with uh, Griswold shield. It has like a, I think it was 65% faster, yeah, 65% faster block rate. So that's a pretty nice thing, but there's nothing worse, you know, than, yeah being stuck in an animation or whatever but nah so far it's not even uh, I feel like I even played better and had a pretty empty map at the start this is actually seeming to be even a slower clear time I feel like I even played better this time but yeah that's just how it goes Last pack at least. See some damage on Inspector. On the Merc died again. And now he's lightning and fire immune, so let's test the survival. My damage is definitely gonna drop a lot more since I'm also gonna miss a lot now. But yeah, this is the life without infinity. Like, it is not even... I just miss so much with the low amount of attack rating. Like infinity is just the best rune word in Diablo 2 for a reason. Like it is, it's not even funny how good this rune word is for some builds. <laughs> the mercenary just dropped instantly there. Oh, that looks so fun. But yeah, let's see some damage here. It's mostly just going to be whenever I do hit. Which is <laughs> not very often. <laughs> but yeah, the crossing blow is gonna help quite a bit here since my physical damage is also a little bit low for something like killing a boss fast, I would think. But yeah, that's it. This was a very slow, clear, not very satisfying compared to the first one even. 
which I felt was not even good. So whether or not you like this build is kind of up to yourself, you know. Um, Tesla Dean is very strong, it has teleport, it has, you know, the high physical damage from uh, using Grief instead of Griswold here. But there is something fun about, you know, being in a Vera Bear and just having that, like, that massive amount of life and everything. Also, again, just utilizing a class set, it is hard to kind of try to make this work. Like, the best is always just going to be a free part Tal Rush or maybe like an Immortal King's Barb, but even Immortal King's is not very good uh, for like a Barb. Once you kind of get to the end game of gear, it's pretty low damage overall. But uh, yeah, this is sort of uh, the end for this build. I think I don't really know if there's other ways to perhaps make it better. But we will go over now the skills and the stats and everything. So I went for 4000 life, but you could also get to up almost like maybe 6000 life. Uh, I also use some pretty high, you know, skiller tier, high tier inventory here. So yeah, depends. Depending also on the budget, I would say you can get up to 6000 life maybe. But uh, for the most part, I went actually a lot of points into strength, not just to only equip the gear but also just to get even more physical damage. I guess it's, it might help just a little bit, so I went for that. And then just uh, max block with holy shield. And again, in terms of attack rating, it's a bit hard to kind of um, find a way to see if I could... Uh, like, I already have attack rating on both of the rings, uh, using Raven Frost in this case even. Using, uh, you know, the steel small champs here instead of the free 2020s, which would have given more physical damage. It's pretty hard to see how I could perhaps get even more attack rating. At least uh, I'm not able to see it right now. But if you're able to get, I would say, maybe 5,000 attack rating, it would probably be the better choice. Just because, again, maybe infinity is not always enough to kind of connect with hits. And again, the Merc can also be dead, or he can be away, he's kind of stupid, <laughs> as mentioned before. But one thing class sets does have is like the well-rounded easy stats. So you get a lot of faster hit recovery, and you get a lot of resistance, and all sorts of other great perks like uh, 150 to life is a lot in Werebearer, and so on. Like, it's pretty sweet to just kind of get all that massive amount of resistance, so you maybe you know, you don't have to get the best Anelius and Torch or whatever to be resistance capped or at least close to it. And so let's take a look at the skills. They are much like a Tesla Dean, just that we are self-casting Holy Shock. So a Tesla Dean is using Dream Wound Words. We would not usually be taking a Holy Shock uh, on its own. But yeah, this is the first skill that I maxed. And you could, you know, in some cases, maybe you could also consider Fanatismo Aura. Or something like that when you're facing maybe lightning immune or anything like that but it's a nice aura and i didn't really take it for the video purpose here but i would say it's a su good suggestion because some of the remaining points i'm also spending is not that important and then in terms of combat skills you can actually just not even have seal or sacrifice i mean you're never really going to be using it if you're just go going to always be in wear bear form but uh, I just went for seal and uh, maxed it. But again, you, you could uh, consider never even taking seal on this particular build. And then uh, maxing holy shield. And for defensive auras, one point into defiance just for the synergy. And then synergy to holy shock, salvation and resist lighting also maxed. And this is again, also just to mention that, a level 99. So if you're only at like level 85 or something, uh, you know, the skills would look a bit different or you could just not even put po any points into seal and sacrifice. And so let's take a look at the gear starting with the mercenary first. So infinity in a cryptic axe just for some well rounded kind of mid uh, tier uh, speed, attack speed even. Uh, treasury instead of 42 ethereal I felt like I just wanted to try treasury uh, for once. And then Adarl's Visage so very standard setup with infinity. Uh, we have also, of course, an increased attack speed uh, duel in Andariel's Visage. And so for my own gear, let's start with the globs. So the globs are definitely optional. You can go with some nice crafted uh, crushing blow globs like um, dual res, 10 crushing blow, maybe life leech on them or something. 
but I felt like the recruits was kind of needed uh, for life tap just to stay alive better. If you were gonna do like players five to eight or whatever, it doesn't really leech well this build. Like it does leech okay, it does do some physical damage, but it's nothing like using you know. <laughs> Uh, the standard seal on Paladin using a grief like grief is just so much leech even like maybe death room word or last wish would also be a lot of leech on its own but yeah grief is kind of needed to make uh, melee builds leech a lot better in Diablo 2 uh, another you know the choice you can also consider again I would still for the most part always go with the pulls would be laying of hands just for the massive amount of hands damage uh, which again can also speed up Chaos Run clears and whatever. And then for rings, I went with Raven Frost. Um, normally, I don't use Raven Frost ring because I don't really like it, but in this case, it's really, really just the overall best choice. Cannot be frozen; it's just needed when we don't have teleport. I also quite enjoy the uh, attack rating in this case because I don't really have a source of other ways to get attack rating, and it does matter quite a bit. Uh, getting 250 on the ring here. So yeah, Raven Frost Ring is just really really great to have. And then uh, Vadungo is here for some faster hit recovery on life. You could also go with like Thunder Gods or maybe other choices, but uh, Vadungus was just nice for some survival and uh, life. And then Elite Ring, not very interesting, but I feel like I just wanted to have uh, a random lead swing, even if I'm not really using mana on this build, uh, I feel like just kind of adding one. But you can also go with like a uh, strain dexterity stat ring, uh, or maybe like a uh, mana life resist ring. In some cases, that would also be pretty good if you are lagging on resistance or whatever. And then I'm using some uh, upgraded gore riders. You can also just go with the normal ones, but this one just gives a little more defense while requiring more strength to use. And then the 4-piece Griswold set, all socketed with, uh, well, the three parts are socketed with Lightning Facet by by Die. And then uh, Bear, yeah, two Bears and two Shells. So two Shells was recommended to me for the increased attack speed breakpoint that you use. So I felt like just kind of going with that. Um, you could maybe go with just four Bears even if you wanted to for even more Crushing Blow if you want to kind of just have more boss damage or something like that. And then on Switch, of course, a uh, beast. Uh, you can get any beast, it doesn't have to be in a Berserker X, but yeah, this is just a random beast. And then a spirit uh, for kind of making beast like maybe a little higher skill level or whatever, uh, but also if you're gonna use it with call to arms, so you can always just kind of switch around if you wanted to and have that. Uh, in your stash or however you want but yeah this is pretty much the gear it's very simple i mean it's mostly just griswold so if you were gonna you know go for this set yourself griswold is not the hardest items to get uh, the facets are however very annoying and very expensive to get so that's a bit of a hindrance uh, but overall the other set uh, other items are kind of just doable to get like not a lot of people are gonna want to like uh, value offensive auras as well so they're not going to be that expensive so overall i would say this build is not the hardest one to get the gear for but it's also not the easiest mostly just due to maybe like the inventory and the facets so let's do a shank the overseer and finish the video off this is on players eight so the damage is just not there on players eight with the lightning damage like it's okay but you can see that the mobs are nearly starting to heal and it's not like these enslaved ones have a lot of lightning resistance or the fact that they have a lot of health or anything like that players 8 is maybe a bit of a stretch to uh, you know perform on this build here but the damage is there for single target like it's just clean one shot really just nice to see that see here slinger if you go up here and kill some skeletons like it feels like a clean one shot, but it's, yeah, it really is great single target damage. If you were gonna do like, <laughs> it would be fun to kind of just run around, you know, public games, being aware they are, being that like a tall, tangy, uh, crazy guy in the front of the party, like it would be fun to have that role, but I feel like a friendship barb or a standard seal or paladin could also have the same amount of fun and not maybe having to use as, as expensive items or whatever 
Um, yeah. It's hard to tell if this build deserves to be made like as a true proper build that you would splurge your wealth on. But that's of course up to yourself. Uh, for now I still think it's one of the best ways to utilize Griswold and also one of the best like builds that you can use uh, for class sets. Like you can uh, like use class sets for quite a few builds that are okay, but this is definitely one of the best ones that uh, can utilize a class set which is often very uh, underperforming or undervalued in the meta in Diablo 2. At least that's how I see it. But yeah, I don't want to make the video that much longer. So thank you so much for watching everyone and have a good one.